What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 21 of the Reply Line. So happy to be doing this. Happy to have all you here watching. Uh, I really do appreciate it more than you guys know. All right, so what is the Reply Line? It's just a short little uh, live stream. Well, not always short, but it's a, uh, a, a information-packed live stream where I hang out with you folks answer some popular questions that I'm or some just random questions that I may get in comments emails or messages back and forth with you folks and today we're going to be doing a little uh, something new a little gear spotlight uh, so and the gear we're going to be spotlighting today is the out XC wireless battery charger this is a waterproof one along with a solar panel so we're going to be doing that and then we're also going to go over a couple questions like a question about the boat uh, rover the aero version the inflatable micro skiff and we're also going to talk about uh, the 24-hour survival video that I did a while back so uh, thank you all for being here you folks who were able to catch this live and for the new folks who are are missing out uh, I really hate that but next time all right just keep those notifications on so you'll be notified whenever I do go live and you guys can join in on the fun all right, so first question. Let's get up in here. This is from a patron over on Patreon, and a big thanks to all you patrons. I uh, really do appreciate you uh, stepping up and helping support the channel. So this is from Joshua at Nava or Nava N A V A. Joshua, he says, "What are your thoughts on the Arrow or the Discovery inflatable thingy? I forgot it's new. It's New Zealand website. I'll let you test it." for YouTube if I get one lol well, that would be cool and thank you for the offer Joshua uh, so what are my thoughts on the on the inflatables well uh, the the discovery inflatable I believe is a small catamaran uh, that is a pretty decent little inflatable um, I have been on something similar and it's nice and all but uh, it doesn't I don't know it doesn't check all the boxes on something that I want in a micro adventure skiff now would I like to have one and use it for a few select trips yes I would but for the majority of what I do it just doesn't fit uh, perfectly and I'll get into some of those reasons because some of those match up to some of the reasons I'm not the biggest fan of the boat rover all right so now and he also asked about the boat rover and more specifically the arrow and if you guys are wondering what that thing is you probably have seen it but this is it right here right over there it's basically a little micro skiff uh, paddleboard type hybrid I guess you could call it I mean it's it's pretty nice I mean it looks really cool I have seen uh, both of them in person the hard version and this inflatable version that you're looking at here and they look really cool just like all of boats products but there are some reasons that I'm not the biggest fan of that likes a little too harsh yeah I, I have some reasons where uh, I would be hesitant to purchase it and buy it uh, and I'm gonna go over those with you now I will say boat makes a great product I mean they stand behind their product for the most uh, from what I can tell and they do make the most beautiful products not gonna lie all right uh, from paddle boards and all that kind of stuff they're so beautiful but all right so the first little thing that I'm gonna nitpick about it now oh I will tell you I've never been on one haven't used one I've watched several several videos and I've read forums and threads and Facebook groups posts about it uh, what people do and don't like all right and one of the first things that I noticed before I ever even you know got anyone's opinion on it was how it rides in the water if you guys see right here how it rides in the water it's just like this right okay notice it's not planning out now I have yet to see a video or a photo of one of these on plane so what does that mean that means that uh, the boat or the I don't know, skiff, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't move through the water very efficiently. It's constantly, brrr, you know, kind of just plowing through the water versus getting up on top of the water and running across it without much, uh, much drag, you know. So I'm not a big fan of that because I like efficiency, right? You know, as much as possible. Uh, all right, and then let's go to the cost. Now this thing you can find them used depending on what they have. Some of them will be used for $6,000, some will be used for as low as $2,500, but most are about the three, dollars $4,000 range, uh, you know, which, which isn't bad, but I think to myself, okay, what can I get for $4,000 uh, that's comparable to this? Well, you could get a Ginu for $4,000. You spend $4,000 on a Ginu, you get a bigger boat, you get a trailer, you get a bigger motor. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of uh, reasons on why uh, you might want to consider a Ginu or something similar if you're considering the boat rover um, and there's just a lot of 
I don't know, there's a lot of things the Ginu can do that this can't. There's a couple things that this can that the Ginu can't do, right? And also, there's other micro skips out there that are within the $6,000 price range for sure that are very nice, like my old skiff, right? Uh, all right, now, something else, you know, me personally, what I like to do, I like some sort of longer distance trips, right? And so for that, I will need to carry extra fuel. You know, like on one of my trips, or on a lot of them, I mean, most of them have been over 100 miles, and I will need to carry, let's say, 12 gallons of fuel minimum. Now, I don't know what this burns, but it doesn't go very fast. Uh, and I'm sure it's not, you know, super efficient on fuel, but... Uh, it probably doesn't get much better fuel mileage than my boats, all right? So let's just say that it gets 10. Let's say it gets 15 miles to the gallon, all right? And you're doing a 100-mile trip, right? So what's that? How many gallons is that? Oh, gosh, is that like seven gallons or something that you would need to carry? Now, you notice this one, it doesn't have an external fuel tank, but also it doesn't have a lot of room for extra fuel. That's something that I carry a lot of because not only do I carry enough fuel to do the trip, but I like to carry extra fuel too just in case. So on this thing, there's there's no room to carry extra fuel, and there's not much room to carry gear. Uh, there's just there's just not a lot of room for the extended trips like I want to do. Now, if you just want to go out, explore a couple creeks, you know, maybe go out for for the day, just to enjoy things. Okay, uh, you probably have enough room to do things like that. But for what I do, I would like a little more room, especially for the money that I'm going to be spending if I were to buy one of these. Uh, let's see. Oh, and also, you know, you probably need a trailer if you're going to get one of these. I have seen a lot of people that will put them in the back of the truck and stuff, but eh, that's kind of a hassle. And I like to be, I like for it to be easy. You know, you still have to store it somewhere when you get home, unless you get the arrow, which I don't know how easy that is to inflate and deflate. But um, if I owned one, I'd want it on a trailer. And you know, if I'm going to be getting that and putting it on a trailer, I'd rather have a Ginu on a trailer or a different micro skiff on a trailer. Now, also, all right, uh, you guys know that I'm a big fan of inflatables, right? I'm a big fan of inflatable paddle boards. I probably would be a big fan of this, but there are just some things that I would kind of be concerned about. All right, whenever you get something and it's heavier, right, like this thing, you know, it's larger, it's got a motor on it, you know, he's got a big cooler on it and stuff. Yeah, it's got, I mean, you know, that people put all kind of stuff on these things. So you get heavier, all right? Well, a heavier object, when it comes into contact with another object, there's uh, more impact force, whatever you want to call it. And so that would mean that this would be more likely to puncture than just a regular inflatable paddleboard, which weighs 20 something, you know, 25, 28 pounds. And then, you know, with whatever uh, gear you put on it, which isn't that much most of the time. So when you hit something on an inflatable paddleboard, it's more than likely going to bounce off. You hit something with that, you have a greater chance of damaging it. All right. But let's just say, okay, let's, let's, let's get the hard one. You know, let's, let's get the one that's tough or not tough, but that's hard, that won't puncture. Well, the problem with the other one is they're delicate. They're so beautiful, but they're also delicate, so whatever you hit, uh, it can puncture it, you know, puncture the little outer uh, skin of it, and then it's foam core, and then water gets in there. Trust me, you talk to a few people who have uh, damaged their boards, their boats, whether it be a paddle board or their rover, um, damaging it really, really hurts them inside, and also it can be pricey to have that repair. Very pricey. Trust me, I have talked to uh, some owners who have been through that process, and it's it's tough. So um, now that I bashed the boat rover, you know, I know I have some friends who have some boat rovers and stuff, uh, and I'm I'm sorry, but it's just not uh, it's not the best boat for me. Uh, it's not the best craft for me. I mean, it certainly looks cool, but it doesn't do what I want to do, and for the money that I would spend on it. I would have to uh, uh, pick something different. All right, I just noticed a, a comment in the chat here from one of my friends I was just talking about who has or had, he was selling his boat rover, and it's Courtney Duran. He says, I have the Aero Rover, and after owning two boat products, the quality isn't there. That being said, besides the quality, you can plane with eight horsepower or more, which defeats the purpose of a light skiff. You, you can plane. All right, so it does plane. I just haven't seen those. Looks like that one, I don't know, that might be a five or a three horsepower on it. But okay, so if you have uh, if you have that larger motor, you can plane. All right, uh, then Mike Grimes, he says, is there a better alternative that is unsinkable? <sighs> there is another alternative. You can go to the solo skiff which is about very similar in size, or the H skiff, or the ambush skiff. There's a few different ones out there, all that I have considered getting myself, um, but I didn't because I still run into the problem where storage is an issue for like fuel and for gear. Um, so I don't know, there's not really a great answer. Uh, if I was gonna go for one of those things, I probably would go for the inflatable catamaran like the, uh, 
uh, like the Discovery or things like that before I would go for one of these because they're wider. I, I think you know they're more open. You can store stuff on them easier. Granted, not many of them have really good internal storage. Like I know that the the Solo Skiff and the Ambush Skiff, they both have some internal storage. Not a ton, but I don't know. I really and truly think a better alternative would be a Ginu. Uh, really and truly if you wanted something small like that but um, uh, the Ginu is not unsinkable it's very sinkable but you know you're probably not gonna get this out into much chop and enjoy cruising on it anyway right so there you go uh, let's see here human being said 14 foot flat uh, 15 horsepower Yamaha four-stroke costs about three grand bulletproof enough to Pull up on the bank. What's a 14 foot flat? Like a 14 foot flats boat? All right, but so there's my thoughts on the boat Aero Rover. Um, you know, I, I, th I do think it's a you know pretty cool product, um, and I remember seeing that. I was at ICAST when they first introduced the boat Rover, and everyone was wowed over it. I was. I mean, I filmed it. I was like, wow, this is so cool. But I had my doubts about it then, and I still. It just doesn't fit me. All right. All right. So thanks for that question, Joshua. Uh, and I appreciate the offer of uh, letting me borrow it if you ever do get something like that. Um, very, very kind of you. All right. Next question is from uh, Editha Drexler. Uh, Editha says, Did I hear that correct? You bought, you brought that bag and didn't know what was in it? Very strange. And when you're recording the video, you say it's live. Well, yes, the video was live. What he was referring to is whenever I took my friend's uh, bug out bag or get home bag out for a 24 hour survival scenario and I didn't know what was in it, I just trusted that he packed some good gear because I knew the guy, he's, he's you know pretty, pretty smart dude, my buddy Brent. And so I just took it out and yes, I did not know what was in the bag and yes, I just went out and I was doing a live video so that's why I said it was live, right? Uh, but that was a lot of fun and speaking of that, you know, I would like to do some more survival type scenarios because I have done a couple of those and they're they're very fun. They're tough um, You know tough on your body and stuff because you know, you're really out there roughing it, but they are very enjoyable uh, So I look forward to doing another one of those. All right So now uh, next up we're gonna go and we're gonna talk about this here uh, wireless battery charger But you folks um, in the chat uh, if you guys want to go ahead and start asking questions, you can do that. Start your question with a question mark and put it in the chat, and we'll get to those in a little bit. But real quick, let's say hey to some folks in here. We got Mike Grimes, Dana Harris, Courtney Duran, After Work Adventures, Keith Johnson, Nate Simpson. Where's my mouse at? There we go. Uh, Mike Tavern, uh, Taverner Media, Kathy Johnson, Human Being. Uh, lots of good people in here. John Carlos, so hey, thank you all for being here to catch this reply line live. All right, so let's get into the gear spotlight. So this is the OutXE uh, waterproof wireless battery charger. I really like this thing. Uh, you know, and I'll be honest with you, I have always been a big fan, and I'm still a very big fan, oh my goodness, of my, I should have already gotten these out of my RAV power battery packs, right? They're very nice, I mean, they work wonderfully. Um, you know, I mean, and really and truly, most battery packs are pretty similar, you know, really and truly. Granted, you know, some of them may have a little better features, they may have, you know, you gotta check and see if they have like fast charging ports or how fast you can recharge them or how fast they will charge your device and stuff like that. Some of them have a flashlight on it. You know, some of them, a lot of them will tell you, you know, how much charge the battery has and things like that. But, you know, of course, you know, what am I out there doing? I'm out there doing an adventure on the water. So what is, you know, one of the biggest enemies to a, a battery pack? Water, of course. So what's one of the biggest advantages that this has over the other ones? All your ports are covered and this thing is waterproof. You know, it's like IP60, IPX67 or 68 or whatever that number is. Um, so it basically means that, you know, it's definitely splash proof and probably you could probably submerge this thing for a while. And I have had it, no, I haven't had it completely submerged, but in my last video, if you guys remember, on the skiff when it was stuck up in the grass, uh, 
and one of my hatches were got filled with water, I'm guessing from the rain earlier or throughout the night. Um, this thing was laying in the water and it is still good to go. And thank goodness it, all the, my little caps were on, so it was sealed uh, and so it's still working. And so that's just one of those things that, you know, if you get one of these that are waterproof, it might save you one day because you never know when it's going to get wet. Um, and also like, you know, if I'm laying in my hammock and I'm charging my phone overnight and this thing may be sitting on the ground beside me or something, or sometimes I may hang it up at the top of my hammock, but if it's just laying around and a, a rainstorm comes up, you know, it, it's going to be all right, right, if it gets wet. So peace of mind is worth a lot to me. Um, <clears throat> and this is still a 20,000 milliamp hour battery pack, so it's... There's a lot of juice in here, right? Um, I've never gone through any of my battery packs. I usually carry two with me uh, on pretty much all of my trips. Now this one, then also you can get a solar panel to charge it with, and I have actually tested it, all right? And it actually has a solar panel on here too. So, you know, typically people have asked me, Trip, you need to get a solar panel to charge your battery banks. I'd be like, ah, no, I'm not really gonna do that because I usually don't run out of power you know, and stuff like that, and this is just gonna be an extra headache. And yes, you know, for a single night or two night or even a three night trip, you probably don't need a solar panel. If you do, you know, it's probably easier for you just to bring another battery pack, right? Because it's, uh, they're both, you know, they're pretty similar in size. So you could just bring another battery pack and not have to worry about laying this thing out, be, making sure it's in the sun and all that stuff. But that being said, if you're on a longer seven day trip, this thing will actually charge this um, much, much faster than the solar cell that's on here because I kind of tested and saw which, you know, I laid it out in the sun all day with just the one solar cell. Then I laid it out in the sun all day with this one, with all of them charging, and it charged it, you know, um, I don't know how much because it wasn't a perfectly sunny day, but I did get like 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 two bars, and when I did it by itself, I didn't get any charge. So I started both from when the thing was completely drained. So uh, it does work, but I have it mostly just because it's waterproof. I don't really use a solar panel on it much um, because it's, it's kind of just a hassle for me. Um, you know, if I were to plug it up, and also whenever you do plug it up, and you know when you have the wires connected, it's no longer waterproof. So. You know, if you're laying it out, uh, let's say you, <clears throat> you're, you know, you're staying in camp and you're laying it out one day, uh, and then you're going off. You know, if a squall comes up or a rain shower comes up, it can rain on there and ruin it. So, or if it's on the front of your kayak or somewhere, it could get wet, and then you know you wouldn't mean any good. But in a purpose scenario, on a four, five, six, seven, or whatever day trip, that could be very useful. So I don't know, but overall. I think it's pretty good. Oh, and something else it has, well, it doesn't work on my phone. It has wireless charging. <clears throat> I don't think it works on my phone. Yeah, wireless charging for your phone. So you like you just put your phone up to it and it starts charging it. But yeah, it doesn't work on my phone. I don't know, I got I got an old Bobo phone. I need a new phone. <laughs> but that is something else that's very handy that I kind of forget about because my phone doesn't work with it. But anyhow, yeah, that is that is pretty cool because if you have a you know semi-waterproof phone and that, you know, you could just put them both anywhere. Uh, on your kayak or somewhere and they'll all be charging without any cables so that's that really is pretty cool that's that's probably the best thing about it that i didn't even mention <laughs> i guess it's because i can't use it all right so uh let's get into the chat thank you all for all of your questions and comments and emails that i get i try to respond to them sometimes it's tough but uh, i do my best and i kind of pride myself in that all right so i'm happy to do it and i love doing this reply line so let's go into the chat here and see what's going on let's see here What's up, Nate Simpson? How's it going, buddy? So we have a question from Scott Latham. He says, "Hey, Trip, I have wait, I've had the rigged kayak and the inflatable. I think he's talking about the Rover. Um, I'd have to say I prefer the inflatable, as it has better control and just feels more controllable. What are your thoughts? Um, what is the rig? Oh, rigged kayak, rigid." Okay, maybe that's rigid kayak and the inflatable. I have to say I prefer the inflatable as it has better control and just feels more comfortable. What are my thoughts? Um, you know, I haven't been on an inflatable kayak, uh, but um, my thoughts on an inflatable versus a hard kayak is typically the inflatable is going to be lighter and it's going to move through the water faster. So that might be why you say it is easier to control or more controllable. And also, you know, typically they will have a fin on it to help it track straight, which I guess you could say that makes it more controllable. Uh, but yeah, so I am a fan of inflatables and I have some friends who have some inflatable kayaks. I have one friend who has one of the new inflatable boat kayaks, B-O-T-E kayaks, 
Like the the loon I think he has, and he is a big fan of it. He loves it. He loves it. He loves it. And you know, I've kind of suggested it for him, and he's very happy with it because I do think it's a pretty cool design uh, for an inflatable kayak if, if that's what you're looking for. But he's very happy with it. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, you know, if you could find a lightweight kayak, I don't. Know, I guess it all depends on on what kind of kayak you have. If you want a touring kayak. Inflatable is probably not going to be the way to go, um, but if you want a sit-on-top kayak, inflatable I think is a viable option. But I, I haven't really tried one, so I can't really say anything. But I do know you can sit on a on a stand-up paddleboard, inflatable, and it's just like a kayak but better. So I can only imagine a dedicated inflatable kayak would be even better than better. Well, maybe I don't know because I do like the openness of a sub deck, right? All right. John Carlos says, how about a water survival scenario? Yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. That would be fun. That would be fun. How, how can I think of some water survival scenario? I need some ideas. You know, like what? What is this? Like uh, how long I can stay underwater or something? Or is it like, you know, swimming all night? Or what is that? Give me some more information. Give me some more ideas on a water survival scenario because I'm a, what's up, Tucker? Because I'm a big fan of that idea. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all about that. Or it'd be cool. I don't know. There's a lot of different things you could do with that, but uh, give me some ideas. Everyone else, uh, chime in. What do y'all think would be cool to see as a water survival scenario? Man, it got dark in here, didn't it? There we go. All right, let's see. Uh, trip. This is from Mike Tavener or Tavener. Have you ever considered making your own skiff slash small pontoon out of rigid foam? That would probably work well for your channel. Then you can make it the way you want it. Yes, I absolutely have considered that. I have watched a lot of videos on how to do that. Let me fix this light. Uh, yeah, um, and I've you know watched uh, read forums and threads about that, and it looks really cool. I just haven't done it yet. Um, basically, I don't really have a good reason. I mean, one of my reasons is instead of building, I'd rather be out there, you know, on the water instead of spending time building. Um, but I, I don't know. Um, if, if, if I did build something, I think I'd rather modify something. Like I would, one of the, one thing that I would like to do, I've, I've kind of dripped up in my head, is I'd like to get a, a Ginu similar to the one that I had and just strip it, uh, strip it out and then build kind of like a, I don't know, like a little cabin-ish type thing on it and make it where it's unsinkable because I think that would be pretty cool. And it's, it's really, Ginu's are pretty good crafts. Um, uh, so that, you know, you, you might could find me modifying something before I just built something, unless I just built something totally weird and bizarre that was kind of like a one-time use thing. That, you know, you'd be more likely to see me do that. What's up, Griff Jones? Good to see you, man. Uh, let's see here. JD says, forget the cowbell. We need more guitar playing. <laughs> I hear you, brother. Uh, yep, we do need some more guitar playing. I agree, JD. Just sometimes the cars just don't line up. For guitar playing always whenever you are out there whether it be the weather or something else usually just gets in my way typically it's the weather either, either it's raining or it's very humid or something and I'm just I'm just not playing all right Mike Grimes says have you ever thought about wait, ever think about something like the Hobie Tandem Island with being able to sail it and it being unsinkable you could do golf sailing trips. Yes, I have thought of one of those, Mike, and I actually, I owned one for a couple years, I think, and I do have a video on that thing. That was kind of before I was really uh, rocking and rolling with the adventure videos. I'm uh, sort of ish, I don't know, I didn't make a lot of videos on it. Um, one of the reasons may be because it just, um, it wasn't everything that I thought it was gonna be. It's a, it was, it's a lot of fun, uh, it's good times, but if I'm gonna have something that has a trailer, Right, like the Hobie Tandem Island has to have a trailer to haul it around practically. Uh, I'm just going to have something with a motor, <laughs> right? Because you know it doesn't sail that well. It sails okay, and it would take me a long time to get to my destination. Sometimes even longer than paddling. Um, you know, if I have to go into the wind or if the wind's not blowing, you know, it, it could take a long to get to my destination. So I kind of opted out of that, and that's when I went to, uh, to paddle boards and stuff like that after I sold the Hobie Tandem Island. But they're really, really cool, really, really fun. If I had the money in the space, that'd be one of the crafts that I would have because they are so much fun. Whenever the wind's kicking and you're getting down, I mean, it is it is a good time. Uh, but good question, Mike. Thank you for that. All right, uh, Sir Chad Trahan says, what do you do for a living? 
Well, I'm a full-time firefighter uh, here in the city of Dothan, Alabama, my hometown. Just got off work this morning after working a 24-hour shift. I work from 7 a.m. to 7 a.m. and I really enjoy my job uh, the majority of the time. Sometimes uh, our patrons, our customers may take advantage of us like for a free ride to the hospital or something, you know, something along those lines. So it's um, you know that can get kind of aggravating in the middle of the night but other than that I really enjoy my job and I enjoy helping people and it's uh, sometimes it's, it's exciting which I love but um and also it allows me uh, it gives me some time off so I can create videos and do the YouTube thing so hopefully I don't have to be a firefighter forever um, if I keep hustling maybe I can just uh, create YouTube videos for you folks one day all right uh, next question is from uh, John Carlo. He said, "Out the middle of the Gulf, your boat sinks and no one else around." Yes, is that a question, John? Missed it. Um, oh, though there's a there's a scenario. Yeah, yeah. That, well, what a, what a great survival scenario. Let me go out into the middle of the Gulf and <laughs> jump in the water with no one else around. I mean, that doesn't sound like that. Well, for one, that'd be hard to film. And all I would be doing is swimming. So I don't think that would be very exciting. But that is an interesting idea. Oh, oh, here we go. Ben Jenkins says, film your attempt at the Marine Advanced Swim Test. Hmm. You know, I have seen some of those. Uh, those little, you know, that would be cool. Those physical challenges. All right. All right. And I haven't seen the advanced one. All right. Writing that one down. Because I like it. I like those challenges. I mean, you know, when I was younger, my dream was always to be a Navy SEAL, really, truly, because um, I love the water and stuff like that, but um, I didn't do it, and sometimes I regret it, but sometimes I'm very, uh, anyway, but I'm still very happy with the life that I did choose. Uh, so, all right, yeah, um, maybe, maybe some of those fitness challenges, I don't know, but that's not really what I do, but maybe the water swim challenge might be cool. Um, so, yeah, good idea. I like that, Ben. All right, JD says, have you ever had a snake get into your boat or yak? No. Mm, no, I haven't. I mean, I have seen some snakes on the water, and I've tried to get close to them. And some of them I've gotten pretty close to, but they've never wanted to join me in my craft. Uh, but that would make for good video <laughs> if, if that did happen. All right, uh, let's see here. Next is from Scott Latham. He says, Trip, what about just going in a straight line into the ocean and living on the ocean? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, that would certainly be interesting. I'd have to do some research, you know, learn how to survive out there. Um, that would certainly be awesome. I, I would probably would enjoy that in a way. It would probably be a huge challenge. Uh, I, I need, I need to figure out a good way to do that. Um, I would like to like take like a water survival course and stuff like that and film that stuff. Um, and then maybe I could go and try and do some of that stuff. But, uh, hey, that's a great idea. And he says, Scott also says, also play us a tune, bro. Thank you for your service, mate. You're very welcome, and uh, I, I might play you a tune at the at the end of the show. All right, Kathy Johnson says, uh, "JD, that's creepy." <laughs> uh, now nah, you don't have to worry. I mean, I guess sometimes you do see videos of uh, snakes and stuff falling into people's kayaks, and uh, yeah, I guess it happens every once in a while. But I don't think it's a major thing people need to worry about. I mean, I don't know. I don't really worry about it. If it happens, I just hope my my camera's on whenever it does. Uh, see here. Um, one of our group used a porta potty with a snake this summer. Woo! Now that would be an adventure. Being a porta potty with a snake. All right, you guys. Well, uh, thank you all for being here. How long has it been? I don't know. Uh, hadn't been too long. So I think we may. Oh gosh, up against the wall, redneck mother. Who's that? That's uh, uh, I know that song. I know who sings it. Who sings it? Ray Wiley Hubbard, is that who sings that? Um, I don't I don't know that one. Someone, hey, yeah, are you the one who suggested that at Rocket Doc? Yep, okay, gotcha, I feel you. Um, no, I don't think I can play that one for you, just like I couldn't play it at Rocket Doc, brother. But, um, all right, folks, hey, I appreciate you all being here uh, for this reply line, and I hope to keep, I hope to kind of get these started back up, because I really did enjoy those, and I enjoy these, and I think they do provide some value for you folks, and they kind of give us a little break between the adventures that I unfortunately can't do every week but I wish I could. All right, folks. Well, take care of yourselves. God bless. Thank you all for being here. And uh, I don't know, if you're not on an adventure, go watch some adventures videos or plan your next adventure so that you can make it happen. All right, folks. Take care. I love you all. Come on, mouse. Let's work. Be good.